Hey, Dirt Farmer Jay here from DirtFarmerJay.com. If you depend on your bandsaw as much as I do, it's got to be set up correctly with the blade parallel to the slots and the table set up correctly. Well, there's a great new tool out there. It's really simple and effective. Stick with me and I'll tell you all about it. Hey, Dirt Farmer Jay here from DirtFarmerJay.com. Well, iGaging has done it again. iGaging is a, a tool company that has created a whole set of measurement tools. They're originally, after talking to one of their executive team members, he told me that iGaging has actually done all sorts of tooling for setups and all that sort of thing in the machinist realm for metalworking, but a lot of their tools are now making their way into the woodworking realm. And one of them is this simple setup bar called the Bandsaw Companion. Now this little combo tool, its primary purpose is to check parallel of the blade on your bandsaw to the miter slots on the table. But it also has a couple of other things and there's instructions on the back and it's got some different things you can do. But let me just point out a couple things here. This has a series of holes that are set at half inch increments. You can get this both in imperial and metric size and it's got this little stop on it. You can slide back and forth, which then allows you to set the distance from the edge of this to the end or vice versa. And that way you can hang it over the edge of something and use it as a parallel to mark lines and so forth. It also can be used as a compass where you put a point in one of the holes here, a pencil point here, and you can use arcs from this. So it's a nice little combo tool. This tool was featured in the October 2022 edition of Fine Woodworking. If you turn right over here, you can see where Roland Johnson did an easier bandsaw setup using the eye gauging bandsaw companion. Well, let's show you what he discovered and make it available for you. What we're going to do is extend the line or the plane of the side of this blade. Now this is a half inch blade and that's what you need to properly use this tool, something at least that wide. And because the blade has set on the teeth, one is pointing towards you, one's pointing away, there's a notch on the side of this bar that allows it to clear where that is. And because these rare earth magnets then grab onto the blade, you could see you could be using much larger or wider blades as well, depending on the capacity of your saw. Now that's grabbed onto the side of this without interference from the teeth. And whatever the plane is on this blade, it is now extended all the way back out here and all the way here. This now gives us an opportunity to measure the distance from here to here, and if it's off, to rotate the table around till we get this parallel. And you can do the same thing with the fence, and I would actually use a couple of setup blocks right there so you're not trying to touch the whole bar, and just get this fence parallel to that. When everything's parallel, then everything's gonna run better and you're not gonna have what's called drift where the blade keeps trying to cut a different direction than what you would like it to. So now that the bar is in place, it's settled in place. You can see right here, I could do this a little bit. I can raise it just slightly also and then let it settle. I'm now going to go ahead and measure and I'll just do it in inches because that's our most common. I'm gonna go ahead and put this down to the there and let it settle again. Let me take that out, there we go. And we're finding that right there, we are right about three and 15 sixteenths, just slightly under. Well, now I'm gonna go to the other side. I'm gonna go ahead and lower this down on the table a little bit, settle it. And I'm gonna go down there. Remember the other one was three and 15 sixteenths. So I'm gonna just come right up against there and notice that I am about an eighth off. To demonstrate this even further, let me take a, a little combo square. I've set it just by putting the edge down along the miter here and just touching the corner. And you can see, okay, we're clear right there. But when I move it down here and put it here, look at how much deflection to get it to fit versus here it is right here, meaning that this blade is running this angle to the table. So what we'll need to do is get under to the trunnion nuts, un, uh, loosen them, and then 
adjust this around until this slot is parallel to that bar. So we've loosened the trunnions here and we're simply gonna adjust the table. Now, one thing, I left one of the bolts intact to use as a pivot point so the whole table's not sliding around. We're just gonna rotate it back and forth from that pivot point until we get the miter gauge slot and the blade side parallel. Three and seven eighths, strong. Still needs to move back a little bit. So here we go. All right, now that we've got it adjusted, we're right at three and three quarters right here. Let's come on down and measure the other end as well. And there we are, three and three quarters. So let's go ahead and tighten up the trunnion bolts. And now we are ready to go to work with this saw. So you can see this is a great, simple, and effective tool, and that's a great combination. You know, another thing that people like are riding lawnmowers, but one thing they don't like is when the grass clippings clog up the chute. Well, check out this video where we show you how to stop that from happening foolproof. And check out this other episode we created for you that we know you'll be interested in. Until the next time, this is Dirt Farmer Jay from DirtFarmerJay.com.